So maybe you got a Raspberry Pi 3 for Christmas or Hanukkah or just because you wanted to. And maybe you decided to do home automation and Home Assistant is the way you're going to go. It's free. It's good. Why not? Well, I got a series here, three, four, maybe five videos that are going to walk us through the basics. So let's go do that. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, what we're going to do here is four or five short videos that sort of hopefully give you a foundation to Home Assistant. So we're going to start on where configuration files are stored, and then we're going to move to how to add components. We'll talk about that in a second, then how to turn those components into groups, and then turn some of that into automations, and, and so on and so forth. I think the best way to really learn Home Assistant, or really anything of this sort of nature, is to sort of make sure that you understand the base building blocks from what you're going to build from because understanding those really makes everything else a lot easier. The second thing I'll say is I view these videos as sort of supplemental content, right? The home assistant, home assistant dash home dash assistant dot IO website um, has a lot of information and it's really good information. There's a lot of good people there putting that together. Um, so Go over there if you want sort of other ways to do it. You want to do a deep dive, um, just a different sort of explanation. Uh, please go there. It's, it's really good. So with that, we're going to get started. And where we're going to start is to kind of show you where the configuration for Home Assistant is stored. And when I say configuration here, I mean the configuration for users, right? So not if you're a developer, not if you are trying to sort of um, add your own components and things like that. This is for people who want to at least start by understanding sort of just the basics of Home Assistant, right? And at, from a user point of view. So in order to do that, we need to be able to understand where the configuration is. And that is stored in a folder or directory called Home Assistant. It's a hidden directory within, um, within the profile that you installed Home Assistant in. So let's go ahead and go into our SSH client and connect to um, Home Assistant. And then just um, change the directory cd dot Home Assistant. And that will bring you into the Home Assistant directory. You can do an ls and you'll notice that there's a few files there. And the file that's important here is configuration.yaml. And configuration.yaml is, well, it's a YAML file. And YAML is just a way to sort of um, represent data in a hierarchical um, format to let Home Assistant read in what you want it to do. I mean, that's YAML can be used by many different programs. Home Assistant is one of them. Um, it's just a file format. A couple things that you need to know about this file format, and we're going to go through that right now. So let's go ahead and open up um, configuration.yaml. And for, if you're in the um, if you're in your uh, SSH client, you just um, you can just do nano Home Assistant. Uh, I'm sorry, nano configuration dot yaml. And you will get the home assistant file opened in yaml format. And um, the first thing I hope you'll notice here is that everything is stored in components and a component is just a section, right? So home assistant is a component. It's actually the only absolutely required component there is for a home assistant that's stored here. Right, but introduction is a component, and I'll talk about that in a second. Front end is a component. Components don't always need information under them. Sometimes they ju they're just there to turn things on and off. Um, and a lot of times we only have the pieces of the component that we need here. So under HTTP, if we wanted to create a password, we could do that. There are many, many different HTTP um, pieces or, or, or um, uh, configurations that we can actually add. We're only API dash password is the one that we will play with, so it's there. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the Home Assistant component right now, and that is at the top. And first thing you'll notice is at the top. There's actually the name of the component is Home, and I'm going to show you how that sort of adds up, right? So you can see here Home. When we installed Home Assistant, it used our IP address to guesstimate our latitude and our longitude and our elevation. You can go ahead and change those and I'll show you how in a second. Um, it actually, because of where we are, tells us what unit of measurement we want to use. Imperial is there. Case matters. In all of this case matters. And then your time zone. And there's a there's a link here for the time zone. 
in the show notes on the blog, I actually have a, a um, configuration.yaml file with a lot of comments. I didn't want to put them here because I thought it would get too distracting and a little confusing. But if you uh, go to that website, you'll be able to, to see all that. So as we sort of walk through this, you will see we can actually change some of these components, right? Or some of these values. So name, we can change to whatever we want. In my case, I live in a loft. I'm going to change it to loft. And it's that simple. Um, this is called a key pair, right? So key pairs, name, latitude, longitude, those are all key pairs. Um, there's a colon and then a space and then the value. The other thing you need to understand is within YAML, there's no there's no tabs. Everything is spaced within with spaces and it's always two spaces. So if there were another level underneath this, that would be two more spaces. And then if there's another level under that, it'd be two more spaces. And as you copy and paste and learn all the components, you'll be able to get and understand all of that. There's also lists and things like that that we'll go over as we go through components. Um, so let's, let's go through. So we changed loft. So let's see how that affects everything. So go ahead and save out your file. Hit yes. And then so we've saved it. Now, there's a couple things we want to do every time we make changes to this file. And the first one is we want to do um, a, a check with, with Home Assistant. And we can do that. Home Assistant has script. And that, that tells Home Assistant to run a script. And that's a pre-configured script that comes with Home Assistant. And in this case, we're going to run check config. Underscore config. Um, and if I could type today, it would be great. And you'll see it'll run through. It didn't come up with any errors. If it did, you, there would have been a lot more text there. And now the, the last remaining thing here is that when we, um, when we make changes to the configuration, Home Assistant only reads the configuration file when it starts. So we have to actually restart the service. And to do that, we are going to do sudo um, systemctl and then restart. And then we're going to do has dot service. And that is whatever you name the service. When we went through this, I said you can name it whatever you wanted. You just need to know what it is. System. Has dot serve. Oh. I just need to spell everything right. And it all works. So we restarted the service. And now once we restart the service, we can come here and you'll see It'll take it a second to reload and come back online. But when it does, you will see that now it changed from home to loft. Um, and we can change a bunch of other things. Um, I'm actually going to walk you through a couple of more pieces of the website here. The other way to restart the service is if you are in the website, you want to come to Home Assistant, you can go to the developer tools and there's a services tab. And as we add components, different services will be added for those components. So in this case, you can go to Home Assistant, you can go to Restart, and then you can just hit Call Service. And when you do that, it will call service. You can see the streaming updates went to a little triangle, now it's back, and that means Home Assistant is back, okay? So that's that's how we do that. And, and um, as we come back to states, and that's the default view, right, you can see that there's other things here. And I just wanna walk you through how those sort of match to Home Assistant. We're going to do that using Notepad++. And that's the way that going forward, I'm usually going to um, edit the configuration.yaml file. And I have a video right before this that sort of shows you how to do that. Um, so go into Home Assistant and open up configuration.yaml. And um, you can see this is the same thing that we were just updating. It's got loft there. Um, and then I just want to sort of walk you through a couple of small things, right? One is the welcome home, there are configuration home assistants. This this here, this little um, panel, and that's what it's called in home assistant, a panel, is the introduction. So if we wanted to get rid of the introduction, which I don't recommend you do right away, but once you sort of get comfortable, you might want that to be gone. You would just comment that out, right? And then go back into the website. And do you remember what to do? You just go and restart home assistant. So we're gonna go restart home assistant, call the service. And then it'll take it a second and then we'll go back to states and you'll see that's gone, right? So right now we're going to put that back and you can see we just, to put it back, we just do it sort of in reverse. And remember it is a component. So it's, it's left justified all the way. There's no spaces there. Um, we save that and then we can go back into the website 
and restart that. And there's there's other things that are that are um, that are actually added to Home Assistant. You see that that panel's back. Um, conversation history, the logbook, and you can see those are here, right? So if we go to the logbook, it's going to show. And we don't have a lot in here, but it's going to show what it's doing, right? So it there are some configurations there that are the sun. And you can see the sun is there, track the sun, and the sensor platform is there, and that's what it's telling you that it's it's tracking and it's giving you the the values of that. Um, so th those are there to begin with, and it'll give you the history. Again, we don't have a lot going on here, so it's showing you the history of the sun, when it was above the horizon, when it was below the horizon, things like that. So that's about it for configuration.yaml now. Um, that's not a lot of information, but I think that it's a, it's a good little start because we're now going to go and um, start with uh, adding our first components, and that's the next video. It'll be quick, and we'll get right to it. So until then, keep automating, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.